for the second part of this little guide, we're probably going to be working exclusively in Squarespace. I'm pretty sure that we're going to be able to achieve everything we need without leaving this particular editor. And we're going to be using this advanced CSS editor in Squarespace as well. If you haven't used it before, I'll try and walk you through it just so you're not completely swamped with new stuff. Also, some of the code I'm using here is easy to find. You can find examples. And as a first example, striped tables is the style that we're gonna go for. So we have alternating background colors, and this is easy to find with a quick Google search. So we've got here the nth child even. We can change it to odd as well, which changes the background color for every other row, which is what we're after. So we're only actually after this row of code here, but it's really important that we know where we need to add it into the site. Also, we need to know whether we need to narrow down and identify just this table or just this page. So we're going to target this page individually and we're going to leave this one for additional styling. So what I need to do is go in and edit it. So this is one code block at the moment. So I need to identify where I can expand it to have a better view, where the first table stops and the second one starts. Okay, so I've broken my initial promise and it looks as though this is all one table, which makes a lot of sense. So we are going to be jumping back into div table to do some tweaking. What I'm going to do is get rid of these top rows. Got to go up to this menu. I'm so used to right clicking, but there's no option for that. Okay, so that's just narrowed it down to that one table. The reason why I'm doing that will be apparent in just a bit, hopefully. Okay, so I'm just pasting that in, and now we've got rid of the section above. And we can see that actually already there's a little bit more space to work with. So that's going to really help when we go down to mobile view. We could probably get away with reordering that so it's just a text block above. And I think from making this mobile friendly, that's going to be the best way to go about it. So I'm adding a text block here. I can then move the code block below the text block. Okay, I don't know where that figure came from. It's when I copied and pasted it from one to the other, it didn't quite work. So I didn't spot that last time. So there we go. We can again do the same thing where we can use control B just to make that initial part bold. Because of the font we use, there's a subtle difference between bold and regular font here, but there we go. So we've got that option there. We can then go using the style editor and actually apply a background on that initial section and that can work quite nicely if i go into the settings here for the background we want quite a small background padding and i'm going to manually just bump up the left and right padding as well we don't need that box to go all the way across Quite happy with that. Just going to create a bit more space between that intro block and the table. 
now we can just focus solely on using advanced CSS to style that table. For consistency, I'm going to keep that same light silver or gray color. So I'm going to use the eyedropper tool and I can see it's F5, F5, F5. I can either memorize that or copy it to the clipboard and come back to it later. Okay, I'm going to jump across to the W3 schools and I'm just going to right click, copy that row. Now I'm going to go into the Squarespace main admin so we can go back to the start then go to design, then custom CSS. And I'm going to put this code right at the top because I'm going to remove it later. I'm going to paste that in and then I'm going to put a little comment above it, which will be table styles. So at the moment, that is adjusting all table styles. We can see it's changed here. And for all table rows, nth child, if we hadn't changed this, it would have applied the same effect here. So that's why I didn't want it to be the case there. And I think what we're going to do is change that even to odd. just because there's a better balance. Okay. So we've got the striped effect. That's worked really well. Was it F5? I think it was F5. We can just re-pick the color, yeah. So that's copied that to the clipboard. I can now change the F2 to F5. Sometimes when you paste it in, it'll add an extra hash, which we can get rid of. And now we've got those colors all matching superbly. Okay. One thing I might want to tweak is I might want to put in a specific color for that first row. So I can copy that effect. and target just first child. I haven't changed anything yet because it's still saying the same background color. So I'll just check that it is working. So I'll just put like a really dark gray. The reason I need to put the important tag in is because this second line of code is overwriting the first one. So what I could try and just see if that works is to move it below it in the order. Because how websites read CSS code is it will look at the first line first and then look at the second one. If it overrides the ruling of the first one, it will go with the last option. So I can just get rid of the important and see if that works. Yes, we can see now that that's overriding the overarching style. Just makes it easier. We don't need so much code. We can get rid of that important tag. Great. So we've got the background color option. We've got the option to change the color. And that's just color, American spelling. I'm going to change that to white. And we can see now that that's got a little bit of a nice style to it. So what I'm going to do finally is I want to change that gray to the Pixel Haze Blue. So this is a Chrome plugin called Colorzilla, and it allows you to use Color Picker on the fly. I use it all the time. So if you've been following any of the other videos we've been creating, you'll have seen me use this before as well. Okay, so we've got that starting to just style really nicely. Okay, we've got a formatting of our table. We've got an overall style that works quite well. We want to just increase the height above that heading. That was a H3. So what we're doing is now targeting the H3 inside the table row. We 
Margin top might not work. I think we'll go with padding. So what we're doing is just tricking and adding a little bit of padding above that total block. So now we can see it's separated a little bit more. It looks a little bit nicer. And we've aligned the text to the right so it just fits nicely on that right-hand side. Now what you could do is you could decide that actually you want to take that total outside of the table. Absolutely fine. It depends on, on your preferences. But there we go. Some really nice kind of simple styling there. However, this will adjust any table that you have in on your Squarespace site. And what we want to do now is just isolate it to this table. So there's another Google Chrome extension, which is a Squarespace block identifier or find Squarespace IDs. There's uh, quite a few available on there. So this one allows us to identify individual blocks. We can copy that string there. We don't need to memorize it. That's the good news. And now what we'll do is before each line of code, we are just going to paste in that block identifier. We shouldn't see any difference on this particular page if I toggle that off. So we should still see that all of our effects are still working. The other option you've got then is you could put borders underneath each one of them. And I think we'll do that as a final option just to see how that looks. We're going to go with the odd rows as well. So you could just copy this word for word. And we're going to use that navy color. For the borders that go in the bottom of every other row. That looks a little bit messy. For the nth child, you could try that with all TR rows. If you wanted more of a traditional table structure to it. Again, I would move this because it applies to all table rows. I would move it to the top and then I would also make sure we've got that block identifier so it doesn't screw up any other tables in Squarespace. Okay, so that's how we can really style our tables in Squarespace. There's loads of options you can have a play with. If you have a look online, you'll find loads of different table styles that you can literally steal, adapt and add into your tables in Squarespace. This one took a little bit longer than I originally planned, but hope you found some good insight here into how you can really Take a table from a spreadsheet, not only bring it into the site, but have a process that you can go back in and easily update the data in those tables without having to sift through a load of HTML code. Hope you've enjoyed. Catch you next time.